Welcome to today's deep dive into the only candlestick pattern you'll ever need as a trader. Now, it doesn't matter whether you're trading Forex, futures, cryptocurrency, or you're trading stock, because what I'm going to walk you through is the universal language of the financial markets. That is in candlestick chart patterns. Now, if I could choose only one candlestick pattern to use for the rest of my career, it's the pattern that I'm going to share with you in today's episode. Now, as you probably know, most traders lose money. And what's also true is most traders don't understand how to recognize the buy and sell signals that are plain as day in the candlestick charts. And it's because they haven't yet learned the language of the financial markets. My job here today is to help you better understand and be able to recognize these signals in these chart patterns so you can apply them in your own trading starting today. At the end of this episode, I'm going to share some recommended reading for those of you that want to continue your education, learn more about technical analysis, and expand your own knowledge of some of the highest probability candlestick chart patterns. But the goal of this episode is to keep it simple. So we're going to jump into the whiteboard and get started. Now, I want to make sure I don't leave anyone behind here. So for those of you who are new to candlestick chart patterns, I'm going to give you a quick breakdown of what they are. Historically, we used to have simple line charts, which looked like this. A line chart was formed by the last price of a stock on a particular day, and you just connected all of those prices. The problem is the last price is only one piece of information, and it leaves out all of the detail and the context of what may have happened to that stock during that one day. Let's just say, for example, that on one of these days, the stock squeezed way up, dropped back down before closing at this price. Well, you wouldn't know that on a simple line chart. So the origins of candlestick charts are actually several hundred years old. They began with uh, in Japan with rice futures. So the futures commodities market for rice. And they use candlestick charts to help you better understand the price action during each period of time. So this is what a candlestick look, looks like. This is the body right here. We call this a candle. It, this candle right now is a very large green candle, which is fine. And if we connect uh, an upper wick and a lower wick, this would be a traditional candle. A green candle, we fill in the body green. A green candle means the open was at the bottom of the body and the close was at the top. These wicks reference the highest price of this period of time and the lowest price of this period of time. So a candle is created with one, two, three, four pieces of information. The open, the close, the high, and the low. Now, this candle right here could represent any period of time. Let's say, for instance, it re represents one day of time. That means at 9.30 a.m., when the market opened, this was the price. At some point during the day, the stock hit a high or whatever instrument it is. It could be a, a, a Forex pair. It could be anything. It hit a high. It hit a low. And then it closed at this price. This would be the 4 p.m. closing bell if this was a stock. So this is all of the price action confined within one day of time. Now, we could also look at a chart on a different time frame. If we were looking at a daily chart, then every single candle is based on one day. If we're looking at, let's say, a five minute chart, then every single candle is five minutes of time. The most popular time frames for active traders is the five minute, the one minute, and the daily. This gives us a good perspective of what's happening with a stock. So this right here is an example of a daily chart. This is the S&P 500, and each one of these candlesticks represent one day of time. This chart gives us a lot of context. We can make it really big so we can see lots of time. We could see years and years of price action. In fact, there are some stocks like General Electric that actually go back over 100 years. So you could look at over 100 years of candlestick charts. And what these serve for us is the basis for our technical analysis. What's important to recognize is that every active trader is going to be using these types of charts. Now, I suppose there are some traders who may still use line charts, which would be incredibly primitive. And there may be some traders who use some obscure type of chart, but that's going to be very few and far between. 
most traders are going to use candlestick charts. And so the patterns that I'm going to be sharing with you today, the number one pattern is based, of course, on a candlestick chart. So if this is a daily time frame, we can also uh, at any time switch it up. So I always keep my daily chart when I'm looking at a stock. I have four time frames, as you can see right here. I have the daily, which is down here in the bottom uh, left corner. So this is my daily chart right here. Then uh, right above it, I have a five minute chart. So this is five minutes of time. That means each one of these candles represents five minutes. So these are five minute candles. It's a five minute candlestick chart. This allows me to zoom in on a particular day. So on this day, we can see that the S&P was red. Okay, that's fine. That's the big picture. But there's a whole lot that happened inside this day. And that's what we get from the five minute chart. So we pull up the five minute chart. We zoom it out a little bit. And we see, all right, so this is what happened. Initially, the S&P was up a little bit pre-market. And then at the 9.30 opening bell, more or less was sideways until it started to pull back a little bit going into 2 o'clock, started to come back up around 2.30, and then at about 3 o'clock, it just rolled over hard. So we may speculate that could there have been some type of news that came out later in the afternoon? Maybe. We'd have to check to see if there was a catalyst that contributed to the sell-off. You can also see down here, these bars are called volume bars. So this is uh, telling us how many shares transacted on the stock at this particular candlestick time. So what we notice here is that as the selling increased, the volume increased as well. This is a telltale sign that there were people that were just ready to unload on the stock. So that's our five minute chart. But we may want to get even more zoomed in than that. We may say, well, that's a five minute chart. I want to get even more zoomed in on those last you know, 30 minutes before the closing bell. So now we get zoomed in here. And actually what we would notice, and this is very interesting, is that the highest volume candle is green. So this, is, this tells us a little bit of a different story. If we jump back here just for a moment and look at the five minute chart, the five minute chart showed that the highest volume candle was red. And while that was true on a five minute time frame, by getting zoomed in, we realized that although that five minute time frame was a red candle, the highest volume occurred on a green candle. So now we're getting a little bit more detailed. We're getting different information. As an active trader, we have to use these short time frames because otherwise we could be misled into thinking that there was weakness when in fact it looks like there was some buying. And that then led to the market bouncing a bit into the after hour session. Now, something that I like to do is I like to get even more zoomed in and I use a 10 second chart. I don't use it a lot, but I will pull it up when we have a stock that's moving very, very quickly. And what you'll see here is that really it was the final 10 seconds going into the close that we had the most volume and then 10 seconds after the closing bell. I use 10 second charts, especially when I'm trading an initial public offering because an initial public offering moves so fast that minutes, <laughs> minutes, that's not enough time. So now you have a good understanding of what a green candle looks like, which of course is my favorite color. But now let's talk just briefly about a red candle. So a red candle opens, closes, has a high and a low. Again, we have four pieces of information, the high, the open, the close, and the low. So notice that the open and the close are inverted versus a green candle. A green candle opens low and closes high. A red candle opens high and closes low. So this is why it's important that the color, that the candlestick colors are different because that way we can understand that this is green and this is red. Now, Having said that, I suppose we could look at our chart here for an example. If we look at a stock, we look at uh, just Reddit, for instance, it, it shouldn't be too hard to tell the difference between green candles and red candles just based on what's happening. So if we look at the way the price is moving higher here, I could go in, for instance, and I could I could change the color of the candle. Um, I, I'm I'll do it just for the sake of argument. We'll make them just for the sake of it, both white. So if they're both white here, 
can you tell which ones are likely to be green or red now that's cheating if you're looking at the volume bars so let's just collapse that for a second can you tell which ones are, are likely red or green i think you should be able to because you would know that this candle surging up could not have been red because the price doesn't go from here to here and then jump to here and decline right if this was a red candle, it would have opened here and then closed down here, which means it somehow jumped from this price all the way to this price. So this is clearly a green candle. It would be. It's a candle that's going up. However, some of these candles in here, well, that that would be a little bit harder to say. It could be green or it could be red. And you know what's interesting is those candles in that range it actually doesn't matter as much whether they're green or they're red because what's happening to the stock price during these periods of time. And again, I'm saying stock price, but this is the same applies if you're trading Forex futures, commodity, uh, Forex futures, um, you're trading crypto. It doesn't matter. The concept is the same because the language of the financial markets is a universal language. What's happening here is the price is going sideways. We're in a period of consolidation. And when you're in a period of consolidation, whether it's green or red, it doesn't really make a huge difference because the price more or less is going sideways. It's a little bit indifferent. So there naturally will be a couple of green candles and a couple of red candles. That's very common as it goes sideways. So really what's important is that you're able to understand when it's trending up, the price is trending up, the price is trending up. And then of course here where we're trending down. And so this right here, is not the view that most people would use. Most people would color the candles green that are going up and they would color the candles uh, that are going down a different color. Now, there are some people that have issues with color blindness. And so for those people, um, they may do different types of shading and stuff like that just to make it uh, easier to read. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, that's, that's totally okay to do. It's to your preference, ultimately, if you want to have your candles blue and white or whatever, that's fine too. It shouldn't be hard to tell which ones are going up and which ones are going down. Okay, so back here on the whiteboard. So now you have a good understanding of the anatomy of individual candlesticks. Now, candlesticks communicate different types of market sentiment. So for instance, let's talk about some bullish candlesticks. These ones are bullish, which is a, another word for this is where the buyers are coming in. Okay. So no doubt a candle like this is very bullish. A big green candle that opens at the bottom and closes at the top. It didn't make a low. The price never went down. And it didn't make a, a high outside of the close because it closed at the high. That is the strongest candle you could get. Now you could have a candle like this where the stock goes from $2 to eight dollars in one candle i've seen that happen before all right so you could have a huge candle or this could be a smaller you know 20 30 cent candle as well but the size of it could be relative but this is a bullish candle it's the most bullish now let's look at a different candle let's look at a candle where we did have a little bit of a top and we had a little bit of a bottom still a very bullish candle it indicates the price dropped for a second popped up a little bit and closed high. Now, what about this? What about this kind of candle here where we have this long lower candle wick? So this type of candle, what this is communicating is that the price opened right here, right? So we had our open, then we, that was over open. And then we had um, our close, which is also our high. So the close and the high are the same, but the low is way down here. So this is actually bullish because although the price dropped, it rallied all the way back up and closed at the top. So this, let's just say this is a five minute candle. If that was a five minute candle, what do you suppose the one minute candles would have looked like? Now, remember if we, so if we zoom in on this, we're going to do a little magnifying glass. We're going to zoom in on this candle right here. And what we would see is that the price opened and pretty much immediately the stock dropped it declined in value then it came and we'll make it so it opens right about the same price so it opened right here it came all the way down to here so we had a red candle coming down the whole body should be filled and then it rallied back up so all of a sudden it, it closes down there and then it opens 
and it surges back up pretty quickly. It moves a little bit higher, a little bit higher, a little bit higher. One, two, three, four, five candles. It could have looked something like that. So if we had zoomed in on this candle, this is what we might have seen. Now it could have been a little bit different. You know, it certainly could have been the case that instead of um, like that, it was, you know, maybe two red candles and then a small green candle, you know, like that. So it could have been made up slightly differently. But what we know is that this was the five minute and we know that inside that five minute candle, the price declined and then came back up. So this candle is telling us a story. Okay, so that's, it's not as bullish of a candle as this candle here, but it's still relatively bullish. Now let's look at another candle just as, a, as an example. Um, let's say we had a candle like this. It's gonna be a green candle, but is this bullish? Ooh, I don't know. So here we open, we close. This is our low um, and this is our high. So again, if we zoomed in on this candle, if we did a big zoom in, what we would see is that the stock opened, it squeezed all the way up to here, and then, gosh, it came all the way back down to close about there. And then that's how we would connect the square here in that upper candle wick. So that is not as bullish of a candle. That's actually showing that the sellers were able to push the stock back down within this candlestick period. So this is a candle that's communicating a bit of weakness. Now let me show you another candle. Let's look just for a moment at this type of candle right here. This is a candle that shows a lot of indecision. The price went down, it came up, and then it closed at almost the exact same price as it opened. The name of this candle is a doji. That's the name for a candle that opens and closes at more or less the same price. It could be a small green candle, it could be a small red candle, but more or less, this is called a doji. This candle right here, this is called a shooting star. This candle right here is called a hammer. This is a hammer. And these are just long body candles. Now, we actually have similar candles that can take place in the context of weakness. So some of the bearish candles, bearish means weak. Some of the bearish candles, the most bearish, of course, would be a big red candle. A second candle that's not quite as bearish would have a topping tail and a bottoming tail like that. We could have this candle right here. We could have the inverse of that candle here. And then of course we could have a doji. Now dojis, whether they're red or the green, it's, it's almost means the same thing because it's showing such indifference. It's, sh it's showing that clearly the price moved up, came down, and then was basically sideways. Uh, these candles here, very strong bearish candle, very weak, again, very weak. This candle, however, this shows less weakness because the buyers came in and were able to rally it back up. So even though we opened high and we closed lower, we still rallied off the low. This is a very weak candle. This candle, although the price came up, it got pushed way, way back down. So these are different individual candlesticks that communicate sentiment in the market. Okay, so our job as an active trader is to be able to read these individual candlesticks and understand the sentiment that they're communicating. Now, when we're talking about the ultimate candlestick patterns, we're looking at multiple candlesticks stacked together that create what I would say are universal buy or sell signals. So let's jump back on the whiteboard. Okay, so now I'm gonna to start to break down for you the anatomy of what I would call the strongest candlestick pattern, the only one you'll ever need. Okay, so let's, let's first draw this uh, dotted line here. So again, we're back into a little bit of a line chart here, just for simplicity's sake. So this is a, a stock that's clearly going up in value, right? So we had a little pullback, a little move up, and a little higher. That can't, that marker's kind of running out of ink. Okay, so we've got this move up. So where on this line chart would you want to be a buyer, would you suppose? I would suggest being a buyer in these areas right here. Now the challenge with being a buyer in this area is in that moment, you don't know what's yet to come, right? You don't know for sure the stock is going to go up. 
for all you know, it could start doing this, right? It could start to decline and you say, Ross, gosh, how do I know if it's gonna move up or if it's gonna go back down? The secret is in the candlestick pattern. So with a line chart, there wouldn't be a lot you could read into it. You, you, it would be a little bit of a guess. Now there are some technical indicators that you could apply to your chart. Uh, one of them would be a moving average. And if you saw, for instance, that the price was coming right to a moving average, maybe you would say, all right, well, we're near the support of this moving average. Moving averages average the price of the stock over a fixed period of time, and they serve as support. And the reason they serve as support is because so many traders use them. The reason stop signs work is because people respect them. Technical indicators and candlestick patterns are the same way. When people see this very obvious stop sign on a chart, they're not going to buy. When they see the green light, they're going to feel confident buying. So one of the indicators that we might use would be a moving average. But I think the bigger thing to understand here is that the reason this would be interesting, the reason I might want to buy something like this is because it's moving higher. So I am a trend trader. I trade momentum. That means I'm looking for something moving up. I want to buy it relatively high and sell it higher. Now, you could do this really all over the financial market. You could do this with Forex. And with for Forex traders, what you're typically going to be trading are breaking news headlines. So you have FOMC meeting minutes. You have economic news that comes out, uh, unemployment numbers, things like that. And this has the ability to move the market and it can move the currency market. So you have really bad unemployment numbers come out. All of a sudden, the currency markets start to move. So you would look at some of the most popular pairs for possible trades. Now, if the market began declining, you would see that that's a trend. If it began moving up, you would see that that's a trend. So this is the same with futures. It's the same with Bitcoin, with cryptocurrency. It's the same with stock. Generally, what we're all looking for in trend-based trading is a catalyst that begins the trend. That's what gets things started. So typically, at the very beginning of the move, way back down here, boom, 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 is a news catalyst. That is news. That's what get, got everything started. Now, the challenge with news is that there is news that's coming out all day long on, you know, it, from all different economies all around the world that affects different currency pairs, that affects futures, that affects potentially crypto, that affects stocks. How do you know which headlines are actually going to move the market? You don't. And when the news first comes out, it might sound good and the price drops, or it might sound bad and the price goes up. So it can be very, very difficult. In fact, if you were the first person to always have news, you probably wouldn't know what to do with it because you would look at the price and be like, well, the price isn't reacting. So what do I do? We need the price to react in order to help us form a bias. So I wait for news to come out and I'm primarily trading stocks. So I'm waiting for news to come out on stocks. And then as soon as it comes out, I look for the reaction. So once a stock starts moving up here like this, at this point, we're going to start getting, I'm going to start getting alerts. So I'm going to get a boom, boom, audio alert, audio alert, audio alert, audio alert as the price is moving higher. This is reflected in uh, this software that you see right here. So IBIO, if we scroll back, CZOO, CZOO, this was hitting my scanners as the price was moving higher. And this was moving higher in the after hours trading session. So if we look at the chart, hello, look at that. This went from $6 up to $8 a share. That's a great move, right? That's, hey, nothing to complain about there. That's a really nice move. But how would you know that's happening? You wouldn't know that's happening if you weren't either subscribed and using these types of scanners, or I don't know, I mean, maybe you would find on social media trending or something like that, but it, it can be hard to find things if you're not using the right tools. So these scanners will show me something that's moving, and then I go and I check the news catalyst. Now, there are times where the markets are moving, and there's not really a, a super clear catalyst that's driving the momentum, but... Even in spite of that, more often than not, there is a clear news catalyst. Okay, so the news comes out, step one. Step two, the stock or whatever it is, the financial instrument is hitting scanners. That's indicating that the price is moving higher. So now I'm starting to watch it. 
And as I see it moving higher, what I'm thinking is, man, this thing looks awesome. It's super strong. Where can I buy it? How do I get in this thing that's moving? And that's the pattern that you need to know. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to buy something that's moving, but we also have to think about risk. So for instance, if I just press the buy button right here, if I just bought right there, that would be a little bit of a problem because, well, it's already made this big move from down here to here, right? I might, what if I press the buy button right here at the very top? then I'm gonna lose as it comes back down. And if it does end up doing all of this, selling off like that, then I bought at the top and I'm selling at the bottom. And that is a rookie move. That's what losing traders do. Now I've done my fair share of that, so don't feel bad if you've done it too. But what I wanna teach you is how to buy on the pullback and sell into the move higher. That is the difference between success and failure. Okay, so this is the area where we're trying to get dialed in. That's the area where we want to buy, but we're trying to decide, is this going to go lower or is it going to go higher? So this is where the candlesticks are going to come into play. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and erase this. And now we're going to get dialed in on this pattern. Okay, so let's play out the whole scenario. Let's say it's 8 a.m., just for the sake of setting a time. All right, 8 a.m., boom, a news headline just came out. We've got news on this stock and instantaneously the price is going up. Now, the way this happens, for those of you that are curious about the mechanics of this, is that when the news comes out, high frequency trading algorithms read the news. They're trained to read the news, to look for keywords, and then based on those keywords, execute orders in real time, instantaneously. Now, as they're executing orders, the price begins to move up. So the price starts surging up. Now, at this point, as the price moves higher, it starts triggering scanner alerts. Now, the scanners that I'm using have some specific filters. So to share with you a few of those filters that I'm using, we're going to say, number one, up 10%. I want to see if the price is up 10% because I want to see this thing is moving. Number two, uh, I'm going to look for, I, I, this is a personal preference, but I'm going to prefer um, when the price is between $1 and $20. Number three. I want to see that it's got high relative volume. So I want to see if the volume is coming in as this thing is squeezing up. Number four, I want to see the number of shares available to trade is less than 10 million. Now, this is something that many of you probably understand, uh, and it's true in, in, in all areas of the market. With Bitcoin, there are a limited number of Bitcoins that will ever be available. With stocks, when a company does its initial public offering, there's a limited number of shares that are available. That represents the supply. The more supply, the more demand you need in order for the price to move. So when you have a stock or a currency or whatever it is with a limited level of supply and demand picks up, that's when we see the big move. And the demand, of course, is created, number five, by news. So I've programmed my scanners to look for all of these in real time. So this stock, as it's moving higher right now, right now, right now, is going to be, uh, as, as long as it's up 10%, it's in this price range with high volume, everything else, it's going to start hitting my scanners. That's the scanner that we see right here that CZOO, C, yeah, CZOO was hitting uh, earlier today. Okay, so the scanners are firing. The price is moving up. So now I pull up the chart. And let's say, for the sake of argument, that what we're looking at right now is a one-minute chart. It's a one minute chart. The price is squeezing up instantly. Okay, so now I've pulled up the chart. I'm looking at the chart forming and I'm thinking, I wanna buy this, but I know that if I buy it right here, while it could go higher, I could also be buying at the tippy top and it could come all the way back down to where it started. Now, since it, where it started is way down here, gosh, I can't buy it here and stop out down here. That would be a rookie move. So I need to wait patiently for the first pullback. One of the things that I will tell you is that the ultimate test of a skilled trader is your ability to have the discipline to be patient. Being patient is hard. We all want to trade. We want to be trading. We want to be making money. But sometimes the best thing you can do is sit and wait. Wait for that opportunity to come to you. And when it comes, boom, you hit. So one of the things that I've kind of learned about trading is that one of the biggest challenges for a lot of beginner traders is having a high quality standard. 
in a, invariably most beginners, they, they don't have enough experience or educated intuition to have really good accuracy, but they also haven't trained themselves to be disciplined. So they end up just trading a lot of things that are moving. And the result is poor accuracy, possibly even less than 50%. And when you're trading with low accuracy, you're going to catch some big losers. And so when you have big losers, now your average winners and your average losers, well, your average losers might be bigger. If you have big losers and you have low accuracy, you're a losing trader. So the way to turn this around is to focus first on accuracy by focusing on these types of patterns. Number one, first and foremost, trade the best stocks and trade the best patterns. If you do that, you're reducing your risk. Your accuracy will improve. Your profit loss ratio will improve. Your confidence will improve. And this can be the beginning of turning the corner. Now, hey, by the way, if you haven't already hit the subscribe button and hit the thumbs up on this episode, I hope you do it because this is something that I really think is going to help you in your trading. I wish I had had something like this for me when I was getting started. Okay, so back to the whiteboard. So we have this move higher, but I'm being patient. I'm holding my hands. I'm doing my deep breathing. I'm saying I have to wait. I have to wait for a good setup. So this is the pattern that I'm going to wait for. I'm going to see a couple of candles going up. It could be one big candle. It could be three or four. But what I'm going to wait for is the first candle that goes red. So as it's going red right here, this is the first moment where we're seeing some profit taking. Some traders are selling. Maybe it was traders who were in before the news. Maybe it was some traders that jumped on in this area. Maybe it's some short sellers. It doesn't really matter. But for whatever reason, we're seeing some selling. There are a couple of things that I'm going to watch. I'm going to erase this here just for a moment. We'll remember that there was news here. And I'm now going to fill out the volume profile. The volume profile is telling us the number of shares that were traded in each one of these candlesticks as the price went higher. I'll move this one a little bit closer. So what I usually like to see is increasing volume as the price is moving up. So if we look at CZOO here, mm, yes, indeed, we do see a bit of a red flag. What do you notice right here? Relatively light volume on these green candles here and here and high volume on the red candle. A high volume red candle where in this case it went from a high of 774 all the way back down to 668. That is not what I want to see. I'd like to see something a little bit more like, let's look back at Reddit the other day. I want to see something where the price is going up and the volume is increasing. I want to see high volume on green candles, light volume on red candles. This would be fine. High volume on green candles, light volume on red candles. That means there's more buying than there is selling. That's what we want to see. Now, if we look at this as it continues after hours, for the most part, pretty high volume buying, a little higher volume on the sell side here, but then it gets lighter. It comes back up, but then a little bit higher here. So you can see here that we're starting to get a little bit more selling as we get higher into the move. And the move is not able to hold. As it turns out, it comes back down. So what I want to see is light volume and volume increasing, but I would not want to see something like a high volume red candle here. This would tell me that either people are shorting it or just too many people are selling and I don't like it. I would always prefer to see the volume on this candle is lighter than the volume of the previous green candle. This is a good volume profile. So without the volume profile, we're kind of blind because although we see these candles, we don't really know what the makeup is. We don't know how many shares were behind each one of these candles. So again, this would be trading without all the relevant information. Now we get more information, we're more equipped to make a better decision. So typically I like to see long body green candles, a small red candle that's not bigger than previous candles. And it's okay if there's two. I would say, however, if there's three, if there's four, well, now this is starting to not look so good. This is not the perfect pattern. I would say as a rule of thumb, I never want to see the price retrace more than 50% of the move. So if this is the first leg up, the most it can retrace is 50%. More than that, the, the pattern's broken. But I don't even really want to see it retrace more than 75%, if I'm going to be honest. I'd rather see it hovering here in the top 25% of the move. I want this to really be showing some serious strength. And then this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to see it squeezing up 
I'm going to see a couple candles of pullback right here. And then what I'm going to be watching very closely is the actual order flow. The way I read the order flow is actually not on the candlestick chart, but on the level two. So the level two is also called the depth of the market. This shows us every single buy order and every single sell order that's been prepared for the stock. And it shows us the time and sales where we see every single individual order that goes through. I'm going to show you a live example in just a moment. So don't you worry. So what we look for is the move up, the pullback, and then what I look for on the time and sales. So this is the time and sales window right here. And I'm going to look for green orders to start going through. When green orders are going through, that means the price is starting to move up. So I don't need to wait for this candle to actually close. Once I see green orders coming in, that's when I initiate my buy order. So now here, this is the spot right there where I'm in. Now, maybe I'm in a little bit lower, but I'm in right around this area here. And my max loss on this trade is now the low of this pullback. So my max loss initially was, well, the low of this whole move. So by waiting for this pullback, I was able to move my max loss from down here to right here. I moved my max loss up a ton. Now this is called risk. I'm managing my risk. So if this is my entry and that's my stop. Let's say for instance, that's 10 cents a share. Let's just say for the sake of argument that I got in this at $6.60 and my stop is 650. My target on this most likely would be seven. And I'll explain that more in just a moment. So on this, I would look for then continuation higher and a move up to the next level. Now, a stock that's very strong, that has great news, is typically going to give us not just one solid pullback. Typically, we'll have another one up here. And by the time this one's happening, I'm already green on the trade. I could be holding my whole position or I could take a little profit off the table as it moves higher or I could take profit when I see the first red candle. And then I can add back right here. And I'll do this all the time. And if we look at this example on Reddit, it shows you why it's okay to trade like that. So some people would say, oh gosh, Ross, I, I couldn't possibly buy this back. And I'll just show you, I'll just draw this out. So let's just say someone bought it right down here. They got, they got in at this pullback here, which not picture perfect, not a picture perfect pullback, but it's not bad. The price goes up here. You've got two, four, six, eight, ten green candles in a row. And then you've got two red candles, a small green candle, another red candle. So this would have given you a little bit of a false start. And then it kind of goes lower, kind of pops up. Also worth noting, this is a five minute chart, whereas I'm really focusing on a one minute for this pattern I'm showing you, but it's okay. So we get this move higher, we get the pullback. So let's just say someone got in here at $56, right there. It goes up to 61 and they get out. Then it pulls back. Some people would say, gosh, I can't possibly get back in, you know, here or here at $61 a share. I was just in at 56. And I would say, why not? It's a great pattern. This pattern is called an A, B, C, D pattern. It also looks like a W here. And this is a pattern that we'll trade all the time. Now, it's not my favorite pattern, but it's a decent pattern. The reason it's not my favorite is because it fails on the first attempt, pulls back, and it goes on the second. So it requires a failure. Now, I don't really like patterns that, you know, fail first. I'd rather have them work initially and from the beginning. But in any case, so it goes higher. And then here we have another one right here. So I'll just keep trading these. I'll keep trading them. I'll keep trading them until the pattern breaks down. So like right here, the pattern, it starts to break down. And what do we notice here? Well, this was our previous low right here. That was our previous low. So if I pull up uh, this drawing tool, we'll just click that out. So this is our previous low. We always want to see that we hold, we move higher. We hold, we move higher. We hold, we move higher. We want to be stair stepping higher. It should look like a, a set of stairs. But here, when we come back down and we actually break the low of this last pivot, at that point, we know it's over. Now, I wouldn't have been a buyer down here anyways because we don't have the green and this is a big red candle. This candle communicates too much weakness. So this pattern already would have been telling me to stay away, to not even touch it. And that's because I've learned to recognize the signs of weakness in these candlesticks. Okay, so this pattern that I'm showing you right now, this is what I would call a micro pullback 
And a variation of this, so there's I have two there's two names for it. Um, in the context of a 10 second, sorry, 10 second or a one minute time frame, this is called a micro pullback. So a micro pullback is when a stock is super, super strong. It squeezes up and this is a 10 second chart. It only pulls back for a moment before surging higher. So number one, micro pullback. This is number one. The second variation of this is called a bull flag. A bull flag occurs when you have this time frame, this pattern, except it's on either a one minute or more likely a five minute, or, or even it could be on a daily chart. You could have this on a daily chart and it would still be a pattern that you would want to watch. However, on a daily chart, you're typically not going to have as good a resolution unless you have news that comes out on each individual day. So on an intraday time frame, this is going to be really best. So the focus here is intraday trading. So five minute, 15 minute, this is a bull flag. Now, I actually will put a link. I'll pin it to the comments, very top of the comments, and I'll put it in the description. It's a link to download my micro pullback strategy PDF. So this is a PDF you could download. You could print it out. You could put it next to your desk, pin it to the wall, and it's going to give you bullet points, action points of exactly how I trade this as a strategy. Because a pattern, well, it's, it's just a pattern. A strategy is the whole set of rules of how to trade it, the time of day I traded, the type of stocks I traded on, and it goes into a lot more detail. So if you want to keep learning, make sure you check that out. It'll be pinned in the top of the description and uh, top of the comments. Okay, so micro pullback or bull flag, depending on the time frame. So this is going to be five minutes and uh, higher. So anything five minutes and up, I would call that pattern a bull flag. 10 second time frame or one minute time frame, this is going to be uh, a micro pullback. So now let me show you an actual real money example of a micro pullback. Okay, are you guys ready? This is going to happen quick. All right, so this is my small account. As many of you know, I've been doing a small account challenge. Even though I've made more than $10 million of verified and audited trading profits, I like doing these small accounts because it's a challenge and it's kind of fun. And you guys on YouTube really enjoy it. So anyways, I've got this small account challenge that I've been doing. I funded the account. Um, let's see. Well, the, the balance on this day is uh, $1,100. $81.45. Okay, so this is a super small account. All right, so this keeps it real. This is being very relatable. Anyone, probably almost anyone, could have a $500 to $1,000 account. All right, so this stock um, has just started to move up my scanners. The name of the stock is GXAI. So I type in a symbol, GXAI, first step. And we're going to break this down like second by second to what's happening. So GXAI is up 21% right now. And it just hit my scanners. It's starting to move up the scan. I pull up the chart. The chart's starting to load here. We've got the one minute, the five minute, the daily and the 10 second are still loading. And what we see is that the stock just squeezed from 560 up to about 660. That's almost a, a dollar a share. It's a very quick move. Now, what I also know about this is that this is a stock that recently made a huge move. So when I see it popping up, I'm thinking, all right, I already know this is a stock that has the potential to squeeze. I want to be jumping in it fast. Okay, so the first thing I do is I press Shift-1. So look at this. I press Shift-1, and it puts in 1,023 shares. The reason it does that is because I press the Buy button to use 95% of my buying power. Now, some of you would say, Ross, wait a second. I thought with small accounts, you should only risk, you know, like three to 5% on one trade. Okay. I don't really follow that rule when it comes to trading in a small account. Also, I would say that when I'm taking a position using 95% of my buying power, I'm not risking 95% of my account. My risk is the difference between my entry and my max loss. It's the same with trading Forex. With Forex, you trade on leverage, 100 times leverage. And the reason you do that is because the underlying moves in these currencies are very small. So you need to use leverage in order to make a good return. All right. So realistically on this, I'm risking about $300. I just got in the trade and I'm down about $276 on the bid. So maybe I'm risking more like $400. If it drops, I'm going to stop out and sell immediately. 
Now, this isn't necessarily to spend this episode getting into the nuance of uh, order entry and hotkeys and things like that, uh, but just to say that's how I got into the trade. All right, so the reason I got in here is because the stock is right under a half dollar. And I have a feeling that what we're seeing right here is a micro pullback. Okay, so see this green on the tape right here? This is the green that I was talking about. When I see that green, that tells me other people are buying this. Other people like this setup. And that means I'm going to like it too, right? So in, in other words, the light has turned green, so to speak. Traffic is already starting to flow. I already see other people are buying. So that's giving me confidence that the light is in fact green on this stock and I should press the buy button too. So that's what I'm going to do. I press the buy button and just like that, we see the offer pop up to 669. It goes up to 670. Now this candle is green. We're back at the high of day. So you can see right now in the one minute, all we have is one big long body candle. The five minute is the same, one big long body candle, okay? But on the 10 second, we see the pop up, the pullback, and this is where I bought. Now, this is not the exact picture perfect micro pullback because um, it happened very, very quickly. There are two red candles, and one of them is on slightly higher volume right here, but it happened very quickly and the price was sort of holding. And that's something I really look for, especially at the very beginning of a move like this. So I see more green going through on the level two. I'm just gonna resume it just for moments. It dips back down to 625 by 641. It's back up to 666, 676, 685. And then all of a sudden it jumps to 720. It jumps over seven and goes to 720. Now watch this, 688 by 717, $7 on the bid. Holy smoke, 750 on the offer. So I'm in at 648. Now remember how much money this account had in it. This has $1,181 in it. I'm currently up $419 in unrealized profit. Watch as this pushes a little higher. Right here, I, I think this is where I'm gonna take some profit. I saw a little bit of selling there and I decided to join and take a little profit off the table. I sold half of my position. Now we've got 725 by 750. 750 is on the offer, back to seven on the bid, 725 on the offer, 765. And what you're gonna see is this starts to pull away. Right now it's up 40%. And you know what it's doing right now? It's actually doing the same thing it just did before at 650. So it came up to 750 and now it's doing a little bit of a pullback. What do you think is going to happen if it breaks 750? What would you guess? What do you think the next area of resistance would be? That's the real question. I would wager that the next area of resistance will be at the next half dollar whole dollar because what I know is that these stocks and this is very true um, in the stock market. We'll show respect at half dollars and whole dollars. So I'm just going to draw this out here for a second. Uh, the reason this happens is because a lot of people put orders to take profit at half dollars and whole dollars. They're just very memorable. You're like, oh, I'll sell it, I don't know, six, six fifty, seven, seven fifty, eight, eight fifty. And so what we see is that the stocks will squeeze up, green candle, green candle. It'll pull back, for instance, around 650. It dips for a second, and then it pushes higher. It breaks through. It, it squeezes up to the next level. So, you know, six, 650, pull back here, and then a push up to this next level, like this. This is very common, that we stair step around these levels. So as we watch this price action, it's really respecting um, that philosophy. It's coming up to around a half dollar, and then all of a sudden it breaks through it. And when it breaks through it, where does it go? It goes up to $8, almost immediately. There's 850, it goes up to the next half dollar. Look at how it jumps from eight to 850. So there aren't really, in this case, a lot of sellers between eight and 850. There's sellers at eight, and then there's sellers at 850. And now there's buyers at eight. 
So now you go up all the way to 850. Now I take a little more profit off the table as it pushes higher. I'm now up $754.43 on this stock. It's up 50% on the day. It has news. And so what we see is that we've got this first move higher, micro pullback. Second leg up, micro pullback. Third leg up right here. So our last high was about, what was it? Um, 850 or so, something like that. Now, we've got a little bit of a warning here on the one minute chart because we have a doji candle. Do you see this doji? That means the open and the close are about the same. In this case, even in spite of that, it pushes higher. I'm not confident to add back, even though the 10 second chart looks okay and it's another micro pullback. I don't add back because the one minute is giving me a little bit of a conflicting signal. And sometimes that'll happen. What this means is that we do not have multi time frame alignment. Multi time frame alignment is when the one minute looks good, the five minute looks good, and the 10 second looks good. When all time frames look good, we have multi time frame alignment. In this case, we don't really have it, but the price is going higher. So we go up to look 875, 875, 885. We're coming up towards $9 a share. This is showing some serious strength. And so there are no doubt a lot of traders out there. Now we're up to nine, nine, nine fifteen. There are a lot of traders out there who are watching this who are like, okay, I've got to get a piece of this action. I've got to get a piece of the action. Okay, well, where do you buy? Where's your safe entry? Pull back, pull back, pull back. Look at where we have volume, 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 volume. People are buying at these levels. This is what confirms that this is a universal language. Other people are recognizing these same areas. These are the places to buy. So what I want you to do is to download my micro pullback strategy PDF and print out these examples, just like this, take screenshots of this, print out the strategy and start studying it. Because if I was only going to trade one chart pattern for the rest of my life, this is the pattern I would trade. It's the micro pullback. The whole idea of this pattern, and I finally took the rest of it off the table right up there, locking up $896.99. And I did that on an account with $1,181. The whole concept here is that we've got something that's moving something that's trending higher and we know we want to buy it right so some of these more complex patterns that you'll you hear traders talk about um you've got head and shoulders patterns where you have this kind of move up and then it it sort of you know pulls back for a second does like a little bit of a double top comes back up like this and then it'll pull back down like this pull back down and this is a head and shoulders pattern so you've got shoulder head, shoulder, and a little smiley face right there. You've got inverted head and shoulders patterns where, you know, the price dropped, it goes sideways, it comes back up. But the fact is, let's not overcomplicate this. We're looking for something that is trending up. And what we want to do is we want to buy on the pullbacks. It's as simple as that. So if we can stay focused on just looking for these nice pullback entries, just like that, that's where you're going to find the most success. Now, one of the things I really want to emphasize is that a big element of risk management in trading is by choosing the strongest instruments to trade. So if you're in Forex, you're in crypto, it's choosing the right currency and the right currency pairs. If you're in futures, it's trading, choosing the right commodities. And if you're in stocks, it's trading the stocks that have a catalyst, the stocks that have a reason to move. Now, certainly we'll find trending markets at times that are just trending because the overall market is strong, but the best trades are going to be the ones where there's a catalyst behind the move because that's what's going to bring in the momentum. That's what's going to bring in the buyers. Now, as you could tell, I'm excited about this because I love trading. I've been doing this for more than a decade. And if you want to keep learning, here's a, a recommended reading. This is a book called The Candlestick Course by Steve Neeson. You can find it on Amazon. This goes into a ton of detail about uh, different candlestick patterns. To be honest, it goes into a bit more detail than I think is necessary because I want to keep it simple. But I promise you some recommended reading. So this is a book that I would definitely check out. There's also a nice little book right here, How to Day Trade the Plain Truth. This is another book, Quit by Annie Duke. This is another good one, Thinking in Bets by Annie Duke. Here's a great one, Trade Mindfully. This is another one, Thinking Fast and Slow. We've got another book here, Little Book of Market Wizards. 
We've got Dark Pools by Scott Patterson, and we've got Secrets of the So's Bandits. That is some recommended reading. If you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more episodes on trading strategy just like this.